Hello there. Heat, drought, floods. Climate change has already caused massive damage here in Germany where I'm sitting. And that's how much money the extreme weather cost the state that you'll hear in this video. According to a study, climate change has caused damage averaging, averaging 6.6 billion euros in Germany every year since 2000. Overall, the heat, drought and floods caused by climate change would have cost at least 145 billion euros by 2021, said the Ministry of Climate and Environment, referring to a prognosis study published on Monday. Just the two hot summers of 2018 and 2019 and the flood of 2021 would have cost over 80 billion euros. The flood alone, especially in rhineland palatinate and, and here in North Rhine-Westphalia, accounts for over 40 billion euros. The authors of the study pointed out that these are lower limits as it's not easy to distinguish between the normal and extreme weather damage and damage that is amplified by climate change. The actual amount of damage is still higher than the sum mentioned. Because some damage, such as the loss of biodiversity, cannot be converted into money. For others, this is theoretically possible, but there are currently no suitable databases or methods. A large part of the damage was caused by extreme weather events for which the influence of advancing climate change has been clearly proven. Forestry and agriculture in large parts of Germany suffered from the heat and drought. For the two extreme years of 2018 and 2019 alone, these sectors of the economy had to post damage costs of around 25.6 billion euros. Another 9 billion occurred in industry and commerce as productivity among working people fell due to the heat. And Climate Minister Robert Habeck from the Green said, We will and must step up our efforts for comprehensive climate protection in all sectors. But this is only part of the task. Secondly, we need a reliable climate adaptation strategy that protects our population, our infrastructure and our economy from heat, flooding and severe weather fluctuations. And Environment Minister Steffi Lemke, also from the Greens, also announced a national water strategy. The federal government has reaffirmed its climate goals despite the energy crisis resulting from the Ukraine war. Baerbock put pressure on those industrialized nations and uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz warned of a global renaissance of fossil fuels at the Petersburg Climate Dialogue in Berlin on Monday. No one can be satisfied with the fact that the share of coal-fired power generation is increasing again here, he said. It is all the more important that we make one thing very clear. This is an emergency measure for a limited period of time that will not be at the expense of our climate goals. The two-day meeting with uh, participants from around 40 countries was also devoted to preparing for the World Climate Summit in Egypt in November. And Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock has called on the international community to step up efforts and take immediate action to combat man-made global warming. The climate crisis is now the biggest security problem for everyone on this planet. We don't have 12, 20, 30 years no, we still have eight years to cut global emissions by almost half. Baerbock made the industrialized countries in particular responsible. The industrialized countries have a very special responsibility because we are leaders in emissions, she said. And the foreign minister demanded that the industrialized countries assume their responsibilities and keep their promises. That means finally hitting the $1 trillion goal for climate finance. And it means doubling collective funding for adaptation compared to 2019, she said. And Baerbock emphasized, the climate crisis doesn't stop at any border. That's why the answers should stop at any border. Or well, they shouldn't stop. The aim is to be able to contain the greatest security threat of this century together and internationally. The Petersburg Climate Dialogue is a central component in preparing the way for a successful World Climate Conference COP27 in November in this year in the Egyptian coastal uh, town of uh, Sharm el-Sheikh. We are all in the same boat, which means we can only turn things around together, said Baerbock. And um, at the Petersburg Climate Dialogue, ministers and representatives from 
uh, around 40 countries, as I said, wanted to agree on the further course in the fight against climate change. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi also wanted to speak during the two-day meeting. Germany and Egypt are the organizers of the conference. Baerbock assured that the federal government would not make any compromises in climate protection, and that even because of the Ukraine war and the resulting energy crisis. Rather, Germany is stepping up its efforts to expand renewable energies. Coal-fired power plants would have to be reactivated for a short period of time, but only as an emergency reserve. And uh, she said that um, at a conference for in, the, in the Foreign Office. But it doesn't mean that we're giving up our 1.5 degree target. And it doesn't mean that we are slowing down in our drive to expand renewables, she said. This is also important in view of the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine. She said, renewable energy also means freedom in these times. And um, that she said on Monday at the meeting with more than 40 countries in Berlin. They are the best security guarantee for becoming independent of fossil imports and thus also of becoming independent of autocratic governments worldwide. At the meeting in Berlin, the federal government presented a concept for a protective shield against risks and damage in developing countries. The proposal is aimed at regulations for early warning systems in particularly vulnerable countries, precautionary plans and rapid financing systems in the, day, in, in the event of damage, as the development ministry announced on Monday in Berlin. It is no longer a question of whether climate change will occur, but only how often, how severe and how expensive it will be. And above all, who it will particularly affect, said State Secretary Jochen Flassbart. And uh, climate protection and adaptation to damage must be promoted. Flassbart said, and it's high time that we, the industrialized countries, addressed a third point honestly. We have to acknowledge that there is a climate damage and that the most vulnerable countries in particular need our solidarity to deal with it. Here we want to build bridges with, with concrete problem solutions for the next World Climate Conference in Egypt. And Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi sees economic opportunities in renewable energies for his country. There are serious steps to increase the share in the energy mix and to create a comprehensive hydrogen strategy, said Al-Sisi in Berlin. Likewise, Egypt is making efforts to implement ambitious plans for electrical connections with neighboring countries in a way that will enable Egypt to become a regional hub for renewable energy, the president said, according to the official translation of his speech. He called for more support for African countries to support the transition to green technologies and climate change adaptation. And yeah, we need it at the moment outside there is 38 degrees. That's why I'm sweating like hell. The current situation in the world must not be used as an excuse not to keep to previous commitments, especially when it comes to support for developing countries, said Egyptian Foreign Minister Samik Shukri, referring to the Ukraine war. The decisive decade for action has begun. At the UN Climate Summit COP26 in Glasgow last November, the states pledged to limit global warnings to 1.5 degrees and to sharpen their national climate targets by the end of the year at the latest. The president of this COP26 meeting, Alok Sharma, gave yeah, a sobering summary on the, of the fight against the climate crisis in Berlin as did some other speakers at the conference and environmental organizations. Progress so far has been very slow and not in line with what was agreed in Glasgow, Sharma said. And I have to say this, and I say this with absolute certainty. A lot of the promises we've made or agreed upon are just words, just paper. And that's what Sharma said according to the official translation of his speech. And UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez called for more international cooperation. What worries me most is our inability to work together as a multilateral society in the face of this global crisis, that uh, Gutierrez said in a video message. Instead of taking responsibility, states continue to point the finger at others. So he said, 
we have a choice. Either we act together or we commit suicide together. And that's quite true words. And I'll see you in my next video. Ciao for bye.